what's up YouTubers? It's me again, Brian aka Gamer55551 and I am back with a special My Two Cent video for this week and for this week's video it has to do with E3. It's that time of year again where E3 comes, rears its ugly head and it shows off and it shows off basically the games that are coming out or are going to be coming out soon. So for this one, we're doing two-parter though. So part one will be about some of the third parties and some third parties, but some of them also on the PS4 and so forth. And with maybe a little bit of some of the stuff for the Switch as well. But part two, I'm saving for focusing on Nintendo mostly on Nintendo so that one will be safe I'm probably will get that one up on Monday if I get the chance so but while we get started with our first part of our you know, part of our what I thought about e3 this year and there were some pretty good announcements and some that certainly perked my interest so why don't we get started with the first first part of this video on let me get it up on what I like so we'll start off first with what Capcom had offered and outside of Mega Man 11, which is a title I am looking forward to. And on top of that, if that game does very well, it's going to be uh, another nail in the coffin for Mighty Number no. 9 on that one. Oh boy. But other than that one, Capcom did show off two games um, that definitely perked my interest. Uh, the first one, of course, and this was shown at the Xbox convention first, although it is a multi platform and it's coming to PS4 and PC next year in 2019, is, of course, Devil May Cry 5, though. Um, although not a whole lot of gameplay was shown on that one, I, it is definitely one that I am keeping an eye on. And if it's able to keep up that over-the-top, fast-paced action that the first one and the third one were famous for, it is definitely one I am looking forward to. The other one, of course, is the remake of Resident Evil 2. Now, this one kind of has been in um, development for quite some time. There's been some back and forth on it, though. I, I mean, like, what's going on with the project to when will we ever see it or anything like that. Well, this year's E3, we did get a chance to see it, and I think Sony showed it off at during their press conference, although some people have issues with how Sony handled their press conference as a whole, but putting that aside, though, honestly, I'm looking forward to this. Um, base, Resident Evil 2 looks, the remake of it, looks pretty amazing. I mean, it looks like it takes the over-the-shoulder camera control from the Resident Evil 4, which I still hold with high regards. It's one of my favorite entries in the Resident Evil series of all time. And while mixing in that survival horror element. So it's not going to take, doesn't look like it's taking the full approach that um, Resident Evil 4 did, which was just action only or completely action or anything like that, based on at least what is shown though. But it looks like it's also maintaining that horror element as well. So I'm definitely looking forward to that game. I am also curious to see, is this, with this remake, are we going to see new locations as well? Are we going to see, perhaps, explore more of Raccoon City? Or is it going to stay close to what Resident Evil 2 was and the whole action will take place mostly, you know, in the police station, the sewers, the Umbrella Corporation underground laboratory, and so forth. So there's still some interesting questions to ask. And if this game does well, and which I'm hoping it does, maybe this will convince Cap maybe this will give Capcom perhaps maybe we should remake Resident Evil 3. Maybe we should remake Code Veronica and use the same similar style that we're doing with the Resident Evil 2, Evil 2 remake. Hell, why not consider the idea of remaking Dino Crisis as well? So overall, um, definitely looking forward to Resident e the remake of Resident Evil 2. Uh, the next part we want to talk about is what Square Enix and like from what I understand their pref press conference wasn't exactly great either especially with the whole mess they had with Final Fantasy 7 which I'm going to be honest with you based on a lot of the stuff that's come out about that they really effed that one up big time though. But there were some good announcements as well coming from them. Uh, the first one that did caught my attention, of course, is Kingdom Hearts 3. We are finally getting a release date, I think around sometime in January of next year, though. Uh, they showed off some footage of basically 
the levels with, I think, with Wreck and Ralph, Frozen, Pirates of the Caribbean as well. So we're finally, the end of the tunnel for Kingdom Hearts 3 is, is coming since that game has been in development hell for quite some time. So at the very least, we're getting Kingdom Hearts 3. So I'm looking forward to that one. The other one, of course, is Octopath Traveler, the exclusive for the Nintendo Switch. I remember playing the demo when it originally came out and loved the whole 2D or 2.5D environment on that one, including the art style as well. I think there's a new demo out. I gotta get, get around to downloading that one as well. So I'm looking forward to trying out that game as well when that, when that one launches sometime. Um, I believe next month and not only that reports are coming out that Square Enix is having a studio devoted specifically to the Nintendo Switch. I think this was reported a couple of days ago and it will be very interesting to see how Octopath Traveler does. If it does well, we might see more from this studio that is devoted to supposedly creating original content for the Nintendo Switch, which quite honestly, I am certainly not against. Although I would be open if they were to port certain games over, like say um, Final Fantasy XV or, or so forth. But overall, Octopath Traveler is on my list, on my top list for the Nintendo Switch. And so is Kingdom Hearts 3 for the PS4. Hopefully they stick to that release date and we finally get it for it to come out. I believe they will, but we'll have to wait and see. The next one, of course, from Sega is Valkyrie Chronicles 4. Uh, this is one I am looking forward to trying out, and this one's also coming to the Nintendo Switch, which I pre-ordered that one as well. Um, I like how it's returning to the kind of combat style, similar to how the first Val Valkyrie Chronicles was. Um, it's not Valkyrie Revolution. I know some people hated that game. I personally didn't think it was as bad as a lot of people say it was, but I didn't view it as a classic in the way Valkyrie Chronicles Valkyrian Chronicles was, if I'm saying the name correctly. So, but overall, Valkyrie Chronicle 4 is definitely on my list, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, the next one, of course, is what so some of the games Sony had to offer. Outside of, like I said, their presentation being sort of awkward, how they handle it, though. And But they did have some good games, outside of also Spider-Man, which... I'm already looking forward to that one as well. I'm looking forward to that spot for that game. But the two that that interest me, of course, was Ghost of Tsushima, if I'm saying the name correctly, though, from Sucker Punch, though. Um, I did enjoy a lot of Sucker, of Sucker Punch's games, including from the Sly Cooper series, which honestly, they need to bring that series back along with Jack and Daxter as well to the infamous series. And I'm looking forward to this one. It looks like it's taking an open world approach. And I'm definitely, to some degree, to a certain degree, I'm not saying 100%, I am getting a little bit of that Onimushu vibe from it though. So, but in either way, I'm looking forward to it. I've seen some of the gameplay, it looks impressive. That also, they also announced Noel, N-O-I-H, if I'm saying the name correctly, a sequel to that one as well. Looking forward to that one, I look, love the first first one as well but overall Ghost of Tsushima is definitely on my list um, I'm guessing it will probably be out um, next year though I could be wrong on that one though but that's definitely on my list of course the other one is The Last of Us Part 2 Naughty Dog still impresses us with a lot of their games I've enjoyed the Uncharted series and the first one was also fun and I'm definitely looking forward to this one that does look like it takes certain elements of the first one, of course, the whole stealth and all. Odd thing from their gameplay showed off, they didn't show off any of the other, like, mutated creatures, only against the other human enemies in it, though. Maybe, maybe we'll see more of that down the road, but overall, it looks interesting, it looks fun, um, and I'm looking forward to that one. Um, of course, the, the next one I do want to talk about is some of the FPS shooter games that have been announced as well. And there are three that caught my attention the most outside of Cyberpunk, I think, 2077, which I don't think that, I haven't seen any gameplay footage of that one yet, though. So that I'll have to wait until I see gameplay footage on that one. But the three that also caught my attention the most was 
Metro Exodus, though, um, I did enjoy the first two Metro games. I think uh, Metro, I mean, uh, Metro Last Light, I think Metro 2033, if I'm saying that name correctly. Um, these were like linear single player first person shooters, though, with a heavy on the story part. I definitely like that. And I'm looking forward to this next one as well. And of course, two from Bethesda that I'm looking forward to. One is Rage 2, which does look impressive. It does look like it's improving upon the first one, first Rage, when that came out. Not that I hated the first one. It was a fun game, was a solid single player. I felt the story was a little bit lacking. It wasn't as open world as, say, compared to, say, like, Fallout is or anything like that. So, Rage 2, but nevertheless, Rage 2 is still on my high list. I'm looking forward to trying that one out along with the announcement of Doom Eternal. Now, we didn't get to see anything from Doom Eternal yet, though, but judging by the trailer that they showed, it looks as though it's basically a remake of Doom 2. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I did enjoy Doom 2016 when that came out. A uh, fast-paced first-person shooter as it was a enjoyable experience. Hell, even when they released Doom on the Nintendo Switch, I enjoyed that. Even though that game dropped to a 720p 30 frames per second, it still was a fun game. And I'm hoping that Doom Eternal, I am hoping though, so fingers crossed on this one, does come to the Nintendo Switch though. Um, it's possible they might team up with Panic Button again, which we're now hearing that they're going to announce a project announce something for the Switch next month. Could be that game, could be something else from Bethesda, could be from a different developer, who knows, but obviously they are working on something, but I do hope Doom Eternal does come to the Nintendo Switch as well. But overall, even if it doesn't, I'm still looking forward to, forward to it when it comes out on the PS4, I, and obviously it's gonna come out to probably the Xbox One and PC. And last but not least, the other game that I liked as well was Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Uh, before I begin talking about that, a uh, bit of a disclaimer though, I did back this game when, or disclosure, I did back this game when it was announced as a Kickstarter though, so opinions about that are my opinion and my opinion alone. Um, that being said, based on what was shown so far, it still looks impressive. Um, the visuals are are, I'm kind of mixed on the visuals part though. On one hand though, they don't look bad or anything and I definitely am coming around to the 2.5D visuals that they're aiming with it. But on the other hand, I do kind of agree with some of the argument of basically they should have gone with like a 2D art style very similar to some of the past Castlevania games like Sympathy of the Night. Portrait of Ruins, Art Soul, Aura Soul, if I'm saying the name correctly on that one though. So I can understand. Also, the lip syncing in some areas are like little, uh, they don't seem to match. But then again, that's not the only game that has done that as well. But overall, my impression with Ritual of the Night is that it looks like it's bringing a whole new Metroidvania type of the game. Um, no release date yet. Um, hopefully we'll get a release date announcement soon. I really want to try it out. Um, Curse of the Moon definitely was something to keep people occupied, but I definitely want to see definitely want to see a release date for Ritual uh, Rituals of the Nights. But overall, I definitely like what I'm seeing so far with that game. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, I'm going to get to part two of this video where I look at. Some of the videos I either, or some of the stuff they showed at E3 that I either disliked or not 100% sure about. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our special My Two Cent video, a look at what I thought about E3 this year. This is part one of that special. And now that I gave you what I like, why don't I show off what I disliked or shall we say not 100% sure about. And there are about four that pop into my head that I'm not really sure about. The first one, of course, what will be is the announcement of Fallout 76. Now, I'm sure you are all aware that they 
that Bethesda before E3 happened kind of did a little teaser to, of what is some of, the, of what they were doing and that was going to be Fallout related and when the announcement came out to Fallout 76 it's the response did kind of mixed for some people and I'm kind of in that camp um, what we do know is that supposedly it's going to be a multiplayer or always online type of a game at least from what I've been hearing and Honestly, if that's the direction they, they, they want to go with this game and this game alone, that's fine. Personally, it just doesn't really interest me as much. I would rather play Fallout 4 than play Fallout 76. I'd rather have that single player experience rather than, than play just this multiplayer only game. Now, that's not to say there are those who like multiplayer only games or those kinds of games in general, and that's fine. I'm sure there's an audience for it. And and I'm not one of those that are gonna sign that change.org petition though. Um, as much as I'm not against change.org, I think there are some petitions that make sense. This one, not so much. I mean, I've seen cases where some people put change.org petitions and take it too far, such as the whole um, shut down Rotten Tomato because they gave Suicide Squad a bad score and all that. Yeah, yeah, you know, that kind of crap and all that stuff. So I'm not really signing in on this one. It's just that hearing that it's well, this game is multiplayer only and so far has sort of made less and less interest in me playing the game. I'm sure there's an audience for it, but as of right now, um, Fallout 76 isn't high on my list though. Um, the next one is going to be Starlink Battle for, for Atlas. Now, they showed this off at E3 last year as well. And this year, they showed off even more. And I'm kind of mixed on this game. On one hand, it does look kind of interesting. It does look impressive. And the fact that the Switch version is going to have a Star Fox in it, though. So that sort of is kind of, that is kind of interesting. But on the other hand, there are some issues I have with it. Mostly the whole toy for life thing. I don't know if that's going, if that's still going to click with people or not. Because we've seen other toys of life gone the way of the dodo. I mean, they shut down. They stopped doing Disney Infinity. They stopped doing Skylanders or the whole Lego Dimensions stuff. As far as I'm aware of, I think only the um, Amiibo seem to be the only ones that continue on in a way so i'm not really sure about the whole battle for atlantis and all that stuff i could be wrong it could be good but we'll have to wait and see on that one and then there's the issue with the i believe it's a 15 gigabyte download for the switch version even if you buy the physical copy so that might turn some people off on that one if that story is true so not sure about that one as well but if there's one bright spot for Nintendo fans from Ubisoft, we are getting that DLC of, I think it's the Donkey Kong Adventure that is the add-on for Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, so that's fine. And I'll maybe take another look at Starlink down the road, but right now, I'm just not sure about that one. Um, the next one, of course, is Death Stranding. That's the new one from K Kojima Production as well. Um, Based on what they showed, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the game is all about. I mean, we did see some gameplay, but not really a whole lot. I mean, just character moving around, walking around, and that's really it. So I'm still a little confused of exactly what that game is to be exact, though. I'm sure it might be something interesting. It might be something very impressive, though, but right now still need to see some more gameplay on it and i'm still a bit confused on exactly what the hell is going on in that game so maybe more information will come out down the road but right now just not feeling it with death stranded at this moment um as but if there is one company that the one i dislike the most of it is anything from ea let's be real um the only thing ea did right that i could think of is that they didn't focus heavily on sports this year but other than that there was nothing ea impressed me with i have no faith with anthem right now i could be wrong that game could do well but i have virtually no faith with that game 
Uh, Battle, the new Battlefield doesn't interest me, and it has nothing to do with the female character, which, honestly, I think some people are making too big of a deal on that one, though. Um, the biggest one that's got people pissed off the most is Command and Conquer Rivals, which I can see why, and seeing that game on stage with the whole trying to make commentary on two guys duking it out on the mobile phone just not only it doesn't interest me, but I get the feeling that we're going to have another Dungeon Keeper mobile situation, which I'm sure for those who are not familiar with it, yay, released Dungeon Keeper mobile. Not a lot of people were happy with that, especially with the whole pay to win kind of situation. And it got to such a big backlash that EA threw the developer Mythic Entertainment under the bus just to simply save their skin. So I have a feeling with Command and Conquer Rival, we're going to get, there's a good chance we might get another Dungeon Keeper mobile situation. And then, of course, there's the Arakin saying that they are all for player choice, which we all saw what happened with Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, uh, no, I'm not buying the whole we're for we're all for player choice. We're all for the gamers and all that stuff. Uh, after what you did with Battlefront 2, I don't think a lot of people are, are buying that. And you did deserve to be roast at the Video Game Awards last year after the crap you pulled. So... Anything from EA does not interest me, even the FIFA 19, even though that's coming to the Switch. I didn't buy FIFA 18. I'm certainly, FIFA 19 is certainly not on my list. So anything EA does right now, I'm not even buying it. And even if it is, even if I find it remotely interesting, I'll probably wait until it reaches bargain bin price before I even consider buying it though. So if there's one dislike though, for me, it has to be anything that EA has shown so far. <laughs> Overall, though, um, there were some interesting announcements made, though. There certainly were some good games, at least from third parties and from Sony as well, that did definitely caught my attention, though. Um, like I said, I do have some concerns with some of the games I mentioned. Fallout 76, Starlink, and Death Stranded, though. But overall, there were some good impressions, though. The other good impression that surprised me a little bit was Microsoft's press conference, though. Which, honestly, I will say, based on what I've read, I didn't get a chance to see it, unfortunately, though. It seems as though the impression from there was that they basically were saying, we're still relevant, uh, we're working hard with making sure that you enjoy the Xbox One, uh, we also have single-player games, and so forth, so... Overall, I think their presentation was probably the best. It wasn't perfect though. I still think there are some issues they need to address as well. The exclusive issues are still a problem. And while it's great that they announced all these studios working on their games and all, time will ultimately tell if those games do see the light of day or if those studios get shut down or not. I mean, Microsoft's unfortunately earned a reputation of shutting down um, studios and all that stuff so we'll have to wait and see but their overall presentation was certainly better than it has been for the last couple of years so I'm kind of surprised the way Microsoft handled their presentation this year so overall some good announcements some bad announcements or some some games I'm not sure or disliked about so it was an interesting E3 though and look and I'm sure you guys will look forward to part two when I talk about Nintendo's as well so but overall very interesting E3 is regarding the PS4 and some third-party games that caught my attention <clears throat> okay um, this concludes this this my two cent on E3 part one um, for this week and again these are my opinions what are yours what are your thoughts about the games that I announced were these games that you are looking forward to towards are these games you're not looking forward towards? Are there games I should have added on to this list as well? Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? As always, sign off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Um, I would be appreciate if you hit that like button. That would be great. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also hit the bell for notifications though. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Again, links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then.
Bye.